mission unto generation to them that fear him. Thus reads the Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. For many centuries, great pageants, processions, and festivals were celebrated to, uh, for today's feast. For example, in Italy, during, during one such procession, a statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary was carried through the town, symbolizing her journey to heaven under a beautifully decorated arch of branches and flowers representing the gate of heaven, her statue is met by, Christ, by a statue of Christ. Then the image of our Savior leads the statue of Our Lady to the parish church, symbolizing her entrance into the glory of heaven. Today's feast in honor of the Blessed Virgin on August 15th is the first and oldest of all the feast days in honor of Our Lady, going back at least to the sixth century and originally known as the falling, sleep of the falling asleep of the Mother of God. With time, it be also became known by its current title of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin, at least in the West. In the ninth century, Pope Leo IV added a vigil day of fasting on August 14th to better spiritually prepare for the feast and also an octave celebration of it, as we still do for Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost. Soon it was celebrated universally as a holy day of obligation, though it was not until 1950 that Pope Pius XII infallibly defined the meaning of this dogma. In his declaration, Pius XII says that the ever-Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory. She was exempted from the sentence of death, of decay, shared her son's victory over death, and was carried up to heaven, soul and body, there to reign as queen at his right hand, who is the king of ages, the immortal. In the introit of today's mass, we hear the apostle John writing of his heavenly vision, a great, very great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed in the sun, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. Many church fathers and saints see in this passage a reference both to the church and also to the Blessed Mother as queen after her assumption into heaven. In today's gospel, St. Elizabeth declares to the Blessed Virgin that she is blessed, blessed among women. And early in the gospel, of course, the angel Gabriel at the Annunciation declared that Mary is full of grace. Based on this, we can conclude that the blessings which God gave to Mary exempted her from the curses that God justly placed on Adam and Eve and their descendants after the sin in the garden. God told them after the sin, unto dust thou shalt return, which refers to both death and especially the corruption of their bodies after it. Because the, blessed, the Virgin Mary is blessed among women and full of grace, God preserved her from all bodily corruption, anticipating her hour of resurrection and raised her body and soul to the glories of heaven. Although there is no explicit verse in sacred scripture regarding Our Lady's bodily assumption, we can note some passages which can be interpreted according to the allegorical sense of scripture, referring to the church and the end times. Indeed, in the Magnificat prayer, a few verses beyond what we heard in the gospel today, the Blessed Virgin states that God hath exalted the humble. We can interpret these words allegorically as does St. Peter Canisius, as referring to her in a supreme way when she was exalted, that is lifted up into heaven during her bodily assumption. In the 8th century, the doctor of the church, St. John Damascene, teaches regarding the Blessed Virgin, your sacred and happy soul, as nature would ha will have it, was separated in death from your most blessed and immaculate body. And although duly interred, it did not decay. Your most pure and sinless body was not left on earth, but you were transferred to your heavenly throne, O Lady, Queen and Mother of God in truth. Though the infallible definition, definition does, not, does, not, does not definitively state that the Blessed Virgin experienced physical death, that is, as St. John Damascene and other saints uh, have taught, it is the commonly held view, though it is often simply referred to as a sleep. So the assumption of our Blessed Mother celebrates a special privilege not shared by the other saints in heaven that both her soul and her body, now glorified, are enjoying paradise.
For the rest of the saints, their souls will have to wait to be reunited with then glorified bodies at the general resurrection, when our Lord returns in glory and judgment. The fact that Our Lady possesses a glorified body now, and all the saints will at the general resurrection, emphasizes the truth of our faith, that though our bodies experience the effects of original sin, God indeed created them good. And indeed, St. Paul teaches they are to be temples of the Holy Ghost. Bearing this in mind, on page two of the bulletin today, a copy of the letter by the Colorado bishops on vaccines is printed, which explains that though Catholics um, may receive the vaccine, they may also request a religious exemption for receiving them if, the, if their conscience dictates that they do so. And this is especially in light of the fact that all the currently approved vaccines used in some stage of their development utilize the corpses of babies who were exterminated by abortion. The bulletin also offers a few links which are template letters for requesting a religious exemption. Father Van Doerty, Father Bork, and I are all most willing to sign them at your request. Our Blessed Mother, who now reigns as Queen in Heaven, so ardently desires that we join her in the Kingdom. As our loving spiritual mother, she urges us to pray the Rosary daily and come to her son frequently for his forgiveness and the sacrament of penance, and when in the state of grace and spiritually prepared to experience a little taste of Heaven in Holy Communion. In fact, today is also the feast of the third century boy martyr, Saint Tarsicius. The boy was entrusted with bringing consecrated hosts to imprisoned Christians who were awaiting their martyrdom. As a boy, he could be less suspect making the visit than if were he a man. As he traveled one day to the prison, a group of pagan boys and men who began, began to harass him and demanded that they sh he show what he was hiding under his clothes. Tarsicius refused, knowing that they would likely take and desecrate the Most Blessed Sacrament if they discovered the hosts. So the angry mob eventually beat him to death, but he shielded the hosts throughout it. When they rolled his dead body over to discover what he had been hiding, they found nothing as the hosts had miraculously vanished. Saint Tarsicius, a martyr of the Blessed Sacrament, is both a special patron saint of those making their first Holy Communion as well as altar boys. On this magnificent feast of the Assumption of Our Lady, may we rejoice with her today and grow in hope that through her motherly intercession we will one day share in the joy of heaven, ultimately in both our souls and our bodies. Through her prayers united with Saint Joseph, Saint Tarsicius, and all the saints, may we daily pray the Holy Rosary and frequently and devoutly receive the sacraments and so, even in this life, more and more join with our Blessed Mother in our lives the words of her Magnificat. My spirit, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.